Hello, hello everyone. Today we will continue to look at the Red Hat System Administrator Certification Question Bank. Next, let's take a look at question eight. As for question eight, relatively speaking, in this beginner level certification, it is a question with quite a few steps. Ah, it's a bit challenging. This question mainly requires us to mount, specifically to mount a file system. But the mounting here does not mean directly using the NFS command to mount. It involves an automatic mounting operation, uh, or you could say a service. This service is actually, starting from Red Hat version 9, a service was introduced that can provide us with an automatic mounting operation. Previously, when we mounted our file system, it was actually done through, well, through commands. Directly mounting from the NFS server to the client, that's generally how it's done. However, this question uses this new service, automatic mounting, or automatic file system here for this question. The task is to configure our automatic file system. Next, let's take a closer look at the solution to this question. First of all, it has quite a few requirements. This question is actually one of the more demanding ones among all the questions. First, what we are dealing with includes. First, we need to export the NFS server, export it to our system. This is essentially mounting here. It means mounting it to our system. The domain name and IP, they are actually provided to us. Of course, you can also refer to it as the host name. This is our host name and IP. We are going to mount the contents of this NFS server onto our current system. Then, when mounting, there is a requirement here. It needs to be mounted to our directory. In this directory, it is equivalent to a user here. This is a user, and it includes, but that is to say, because our user is normally creating this, a subdirectory for one of our users. Generally, by default, the name is the same as the username. So here, the directory might also have this name, yadun, and the user also has this name. They, they are the same. Ultimately, the requirement here is to mount the NFS server's directory into a directory of the current local user. After mounting, an additional requirement is that the home directory must be readable by the user. And finally, we are told the user's password because we need to log in as this user, so we need the password to log in. These are the basic requirements of this task. Indeed, there are more requirements compared to previous tasks. However, this task is not particularly difficult to complete, at least here. The good thing is that it doesn't require us to configure anything, Specifically, it doesn't require us to configure the server side. If we had to configure the server side, there would be relatively more configurations. But since it's just the client side, it's relatively simpler. Here, we first need to install the service, and everyone should pay attention to the service mentioned in our task. That is our automatic file system. Yes, it's a service name. That's right. This is one of them. But we can't just install it alone. Its main function or purpose is to provide users with automatic mounting. This means that when users log in, it automatically mounts. That's what it means. It only provides an automatic mounting operation. And to actually connect to our NFS directory, the shared directory, what do we still need? We still need the most basic fundamentals. NFS service. So in this case, it's a bit special. For this task, we need to install two pieces of software. We need to install two. So next, let's proceed with the specific e operations. This task is about our... There might be a slight issue with the environment, meaning the final result might differ slightly from the real effect. However, the operational steps are correct, so just remember all the steps, and that should be fine. Later, when you verify during the exam, as long as you can achieve the result specified in the question, that's all that matters. So next, our first step is to install our service and the auto mount service. All right, now let's open this. First, we will establish a remote connection. Here, when connecting remotely, you can try it first. If it doesn't connect, it's usually because your virtual machine hasn't started or isn't fully running yet, which is normal. However, I can connect immediately here because in the last session, we encountered an issue. 
after shutting down, there was a problem where it started up very slowly. So, in the previous episodes, after I finished explaining the previous questions, I took a startup snapshot on me. The downside of using a startup snapshot is that it consumes a lot of memory, a lot of memory, and it also uses a significant amount of our hard drive resources. Uh, but the advantage is, when restoring, we can directly return to that state, with all virtual machines being in an open state. This is relatively better, relatively better. So here, I took a startup snapshot, which makes the connection faster. If you take a shutdown snapshot, the first time you connect to node 1 or node 2, it will take a little bit of time. So here, we are already connected, all right? Now let's start with the content of question 8. First, we need to install. Ah, here you don't need to worry about whether it's installed in the environment. Just directly enter this command, and if it's not installed, it will install it. If it's already installed, it will tell you that it's already installed. See, this one is already installed. All right, let's look at the next one. This is the NFS service, and the other one is our auto mount, auto file system. ID automatically mounting our directories. Oh, this one isn't installed, right? Let's install it. Once everything is installed, the configuration here will have some differences from the normal NFS. It will be somewhat different from the regular NFS. Here, make sure not to use the NFS method to mount. This will cause issues because the NFS configuration is actually just on the server side. What are we now? We are now in the role of the client, so we don't need to configure so many configuration files. Things like allowed mounts or directory names, etc. don't need to be specified. What do we need? We only need to mount the directory required by the problem statement and whom this directory. So first, let's edit the, your automatic mounting configuration file. All right, let's go in. And once inside, we can see, well, there are a few, well, a few configuration files here. How many lines? The configuration file actually doesn't have much content. Ah, here we can directly, what can we do directly? We can just add it directly, just add it directly. When adding content, what do we write first? First, we write the directory to be mounted. Here, what is written is the directory of our server, our home. Then we write our configuration file. Ah, uh, here, actually, you can see below, it also has, what does it also have? It also has files, right? Ah, below are also files, like this directory. What is its main function? You see, this is also a directory. The main function of this is actually what? Actually, it is to help us, or rather, to accurately tell us where the specific configuration of our service is located, in which file or directory, so that it can find specific information in this directory. Here, what we first write is, if we say, we want to mount this R number directory, which file should we look for? Go find, under the etc directory, etc. Alter, our home. Ah, if we look for this file in this directory, it's not there yet. Not yet. We need to edit it ourselves later. Edit it ourselves. Once specified here, it's like, hey, we are going to mount this directory. Then the service, start looking for the configuration. Find it in this file. Hey, discover that I need to mount the second directory. Where should I go to find it? Go to our file to find it. No. Hey, this is the first step. After knowing the file's location, hey, read this file and edit it. The file we just created is .rhome, right? Ah, the name of the file I created is called alter.home. After entering, it is empty by default, which is normal. Okay, next we start writing. Start writing a specific mounting strategy. And here everyone should note that the content of the mounting strategy will be a bit lengthy. The command, of course, is not very complicated, but it is indeed a bit long. Uh, here, everyone should be careful not to make mistakes. Let me emphasize that again. For each question, we will basically emphasize the points that are easy to get wrong, right? This is one of those points that are easy to get wrong. If you make a mistake here, what problems might arise? Ah, naturally, it will result in a mounting failure. It will naturally fail to mount. Here, we first use... user 
earlier in the problem, didn't we specify a username? Ah, we called it remote user one. This is the user we require for mounting. And then, regarding permissions, what does the problem require? It requires the ability to write. Right? The write protocol? What kind of permission is that? Both read and write permissions are required. Now pay attention. Both are necessary. Reading is a prerequisite. So we need to specify both read and write permissions. This is the first step. And then we have the permissions. As for where to mount it, we don't actually know the specific path yet, right? So where exactly do we mount it? We mount it to the host name or domain name specified in the problem. Since we are on an internal network, it is essentially just a host name. Let's specify it. Dot. This example. Followed by a directory. Here, everyone needs to pay attention. Where should it be mounted? The problem also specifies this requirement. Please note that the problem specifies where it should be mounted. So where do we mount it? Mount it to. According to the problem's requirements, it should be in this user's directory. All right, writing it this way is fine. Please pay attention to these words. They are relatively long. So make sure not to make any mistakes. Ah, make sure to follow the problem's requirements. However, the theme name generally doesn't change. The theme name usually remains the same. The prefix also doesn't change. Ah, the only thing that might change is the user. The name, the user's name might change. So everyone should pay attention to this. Because if the host name changes, actually all the questions will change along with it. So generally, there won't be too much change, not much change, because we have seen this host name before, right? Because this host name actually involves several pieces of software. Under this host name, it provides an environment issue for many of our questions. After we finish writing here, let's carefully check it. This question can be verified, so if you don't want to check, you can also directly save and exit. Then we can start the service. Once you turn on the machine, remember to do it once. It's essential. Ah, the kids must do it. After starting the service automatically upon booting, we can then take a look. As of now, this question is already completed. There's no need to proceed further. Because what are the requirements of our question? The requirement is automatic mounting. Ah, that is, when the user logs in, it automatically mounts to our corresponding directory, and that's it. The requirement is fulfilled. So actually, it's already finished here. If you want to log in, that's part of the verification process. How do we verify? First, uh, because our question requires this directory. The our home directory, right? Currently, it's empty. Yes, it's empty now. And generally during the exam, it will also be empty. So when you want to verify, you log in remotely to this user. And after logging into this user, you can take a look at the directory where the user is located. Ah, check the user's subdirectories, and you can also look at the mount information. My, here, due to environmental issues, the result of this question might differ slightly from the actual result, because in our environment, this. The NFS server under this host name has a slight issue. So when you are working on this, you should. These are the steps. The steps for this task are to install two pieces of software, then edit two files, start the service, and that's it, five commands in total. To verify first, because the task requires us to mount under our home move, so initially, make sure it has no content. Then when you want to verify, use SSH. When remotely connecting to our user, the command uh, for the user is quite long, right? Lay a connection. To our local, just connect to the local. As for the password, it will be in the task. It will be in the task. OK, if the password is entered incorrectly, check the password in the task.
Everyone should know to input the password from the task. Just enter it as specified in the task. Check if the username is correct here. There's no issue with the username. The username is this, he said, and for the password. Just enter it as specified e in the task. After entering, you will see your current subdirectory as long as your current subdirectory is under the our home directory. If it's the remote user one, it means there's no problem with this task. E. This is the situation for our eighth question. Here, I'm checking this password. We have a slight issue with the environment for this task. When everyone is verifying, just do it directly. During the exam, you can verify in the middle. There is a slight issue with the password. If there is a problem, we can't do anything about it, and we can't verify it here either. When everyone verifies in this way, it's just like this. After logging in, you can actually use the PWD command to see the current directory we are in, as long as it's under our home, remote user1. Of course, you can also use the DF command to check the currently mounted disk. That's also fine. This way works too. Looking at it this way, if you can see something, you can see our... And if the directory is mounted correctly, oh, then there's no problem. This is the situation for our eighth question. And here it's actually... In reality, it is meant to achieve this kind of effect. Everyone can. Take a look. Hmm, as long as you achieve what? As long as you achieve this. Here, what appears extra appears extra. The host name plus the R home directory should be mounted to the R home remote user one directory as required in our question, and that's our final requirement. Ah, as long as this requirement is met, there should be no problem. Or, as long as when you log in as a user, you are under the R, home, remote user 1 directory, that is also correct. Both methods are actually acceptable. Both methods are fine. Ah, this is how you verify this question. This question, relatively speaking, is one where, in the beginner's exam, the steps are a bit more numerous. The steps are slightly more, but in reality, it's just about five commands. It's not particularly difficult. Not particularly difficult. Ah, following this, there are two more container questions, and relatively speaking, the commands for these will be slightly longer. For other questions, it's basically just one or two commands. Like this one with five commands for mounting directories, it's considered relatively many. When you're doing this, the main thing to pay attention to is making sure you write both directories correctly in the file. Because we actually have two directories, please note, it's not just one directory. The directories here are divided into ours. This includes the host name of this machine plus the R home directory. This is equivalent to our source directory. And where is the target directory? The target directory is at the back. We mount this source directory to the target directory, which is under the R home remote user directory as required here. Just mount it there. Ah, in the end, if you can see that the effect is fine, then it's okay. This sentence is out configuration for automatic mounting. Relatively speaking, the good thing is that this task doesn't actually require us to configure the server side, it just asks us to use the client to mount. So, relatively speaking, there are fewer configurations, just five commands. However, you must be careful. All right, this is the content of our eighth question. If you need the complete question bank, you can leave a comment below and purchase the most stable question bank at the best price. That's it for today, everyone. Goodbye.